Mary almost, uh, it, it, uh, it, you know, it felt for the moment there like, you know, the Palestinians and the Israeli army. But now the police are moving, uh, and you can see, you'll, you'll be able to see, some of them have, have riot shields, those acrylic plastic front shields that they use to protect themselves from these stones and rocks, which are 100% being thrown at them. And some of them do not. Like this, the, you know, the, the guys in the white shirts are always the guys in charge. This one in the white shirt does not have anything, so he's backing up behind all these. We've watched the police try to make a move on the, on the juveniles, but look, at the, look in the street down here. It's littered with these brick vats, and, and the kids are fully moving on police, and police are backing down. So what do you do now? Do you bring out water cannons? Do you bring out pepper spray to disperse the crowd? If a police officer gets hit and is down, then what do you do with more teens who are rushing you at the time? Do you reach a point where officers have to, to protect themselves and their lives, return fire in some way, besides with the, with the brick bats, which they are clearly throwing? This is, as, this is an extremely intense and scary moment, I, I, I think I can surmise, because if the kids continue to move on the police and the kids are backing them down, say a police officer is injured and down in the street, and then you go to try to save the police officer, at some point some of these people who are moving on police and have backed them up now at least two blocks, they will have to be stopped in some way. And when police begin returning malls, the train station's closed here, now they've brought in a larger vehicle. This is one, or if, if not the same one, a twin of it that we saw earlier, and they were initially just pelting it with, with rocks and construction debris. Now you see some flashbang things going off. This, this would disperse either, uh, either uh, pepper spray or it, it you know, could be something more severe. I, I can't, I'm not going to say that they've just put mace in the streets to disperse the crowd, but it, it would not be surprising. The winds are moving back this way, and whatever this is, the kids are now on the run. The question is, does this stop it? Uh, you know, you, you can hope that violence does not escalate in a way that the victim's family has said they hope it doesn't, uh, that no police officers are injured, that none of these, frankly, children and teenagers uh, were led to believe by the Baltimore police that's what this is, that none of them are injured to compound the tragedy of already a death in police custody that is, frankly, at this moment, inexplicable. So we now have a separation of police and demonstrators, again, believed to be teenagers, these same police who came out to try off the streets are now scattered about and you can see that the crowds are building I told you the train station is closed and we're working to close clearly the police are closing down some of these roadways uh, so a lot happening in Baltimore at this moment the crowds have been backed up by the spray of some sort and now on the phone with us is the Baltimore Sun reporter Justin Fenton are you on scene Justin I am not on scene. I've been monitoring through social media and the live TV feeds like yourself, uh, it, and I'm headed up there right now. It, it looks like things have, have escalated to the point where police are returning uh, rock and brick fire with rock and brick fire. Yeah, there's a lot of panic. I mean, you know, every newsroom has a police scanner, and we hear a lot of panic. It's, it's unclear how this really started. I mean, early afternoon, uh, there was uh, reports of businesses downtown, uh, college uh, campuses, financial institutions being told, to shut down over this, basically, a, a, this meme that was going around social media, this, this flyer that was saying all high school students uh, were going to purge today, which is a reference to this movie where there was a period of lawlessness. Um, frankly, we, we've seen uh, things like that in the past that didn't come to fruition, uh, but because of the current climate, the officers uh, showed up in, in full force. And so, it, you know, this is actually an area where teens catch buses to go home. There's about 10 bus stops there and a subway hub, and city... Nothing to show that that will be the case. It, it looked like a little mace did some dispersing. But if you look in these streets, the police have made their lines, and now you see kids on the, this, this is a live pictures now of WBFF, our station there in Baltimore, on the back side of the police line. And if you watch, you'll see items being hurled at these officers. The officers are maintaining their ground here, but you see down the street from this on the ground camera, or, or I saw a moment ago, and now I see a few more things being hurled at police. So 
If you are the police, what are you now supposed to do? That is why these matters Jennifer, are... You may it, be able to see listen to the reporter. Rocks and bricks at the officers as we speak. Police have their riot gear on. They have their shields. But these are young people. Look at them. They look like teenagers throwing rocks and bricks at the police officers here. Police have been saying, move, 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 move back, move back. It seems like these kids have gone into the neighborhood, rearmed themselves, and returned here, throwing these rocks and bricks. Again, we're live on Reisterstown Road near Gwens Falls Boulevard. Gwens Falls, Falls Boulevard. Uh, people, again, are throwing debris at police. It is out of order here, definitely. That's, that's an understatement, I presume. It's out of order. Hundreds of young people here throwing debris at police. If you look down there, you may see where police now are advancing on the crowd. They're advancing on the uh, demonstrators or agitators, as some people are calling them here. They say they're here because it's in the name of Freddie Gray, but this is not the peaceful protest that the family and others have asked that demonstrators participate in. Be careful that, that police have, uh, that others have asked people to participate in. So they're trying to restore order here near Mondawmin. Watch it! Near Mondawmin Mall. But it's clearly out of order. Back to you in the studio. Come over here. Be careful. I mean, isn't that the worry here for the part of authorities at the scene that they were obviously caught surprised by this, it would appear? Sheriff? Right. I, I heard that, uh, you know, according to the news report there, that uh, things are starting to calm down a little bit after that initial burst. Uh, now the state police are on the way. I don't want to be overcritical, but you have to have those resources marshaled already and ready to go so that when you turn that button on, they are right there on their way down. To me, it's a day late and a dollar short. So I would have to have some question uh, about the strategic operational decisions going on right there. And I don't know all of it, but if I hear people are on the way, I'd say, where were you when we needed you? You know, here we are. This could, be, could be a long night there. Maybe they get under control. Enough SWAT teams are there with enough manpower to sort of contain this, but it could be a very tense night. And a lot of people like to cover darkness, Alita. Uh, and I'm wondering, how you advise those who want to come out, who've been seeing these images, they feel emboldened to come out, they don't like the way police have been treating some of these protesters, you know, that feeds on itself. Right. I was just thinking as I was watching that, and this evening, you know, I'm a parent and a grandparent. If I'm looking at television and I see one of my children on there, and I'm paying their telephone bill, I'm going to say, hey, get home now. I'm paying this phone bill, and this is where you live. Get here. And for the parents to begin to talk to those young people, or the grandparents, or the aunties, or the uncles. And for those in this evening, if you want to do something, if you feel that injustice is occurring in your community, then do that peacefully. Congregate together. There's safety in numbers, but do it reasonably. And that's what uh, Sheriff Clark, I believe, is saying when he's saying, uh, Go with your training to the law enforcement. Use your training, not your emotions. Don't let your adrenaline kick you into retaliating without following that discipline and training that you actually have. Judge David Napolitano joins us right now, and Judge, this is obviously a developing uh, crisis here, and then and they don't want it to become a bigger crisis in Baltimore, uh, but earlier today it did. Uh, obviously, authorities have to be mindful of not trampling on on these folks rights to protest but that not so fine line is when they start just trampling period right yeah. well you know there are a, a lot of legitimate protesters there with a lot of legitimate beefs there are also people there with no legitimate beefs who want to use the chaos of the moment to advance their political cause which i'm sorry to say is decidedly anti-police now we can't live without the police these people no. are, are are crazy but they're entitled to express this view, so you're quite right. There, there are no words that anyone is going to utter there that are themselves actionable, but when they start throwing rocks and destroying property and endangering the lives of others, that, that is not freedom of expression, and the, people ha the police have to do what they have to do. Uh, you, you have uh, serious law enforcement folks on 
on the set with us, and they know better than I what the protocol is. But the protocol, as I understand it, of course, is to arrest those who are causing the most harm, and not because of their words, but because of their physical harm. You know, uh, Sheriff, you're watching this as well as I am, but they're back to throwing rocks again, and that is a, a provocative act, I would assume. Um, so how do you respond to that if you're on the scene with the, the SWAT teams there? Aggressively, assertively, reasonably, lawfully, and again, uh, sending a message to these rioters, these, these goons, if you will. Yeah, they are hopping on a police car now. I, I, this this is the kind of thing that, has to stop. that is uh, textbook bad to do in the middle of an engagement here. I assume there are officers in that vehicle, but go ahead. I think it's important, Neil, to point out that when you talk about peaceful protesters, look, those are the smart people. When, uh, when all hell breaks loose, they get out of there. Mm -hmm. So the only people that are down there right now, as far, my, as far as I'm concerned, are the rioters, the looters, the agitators, the troublemakers, uh, and they're easy to sort out. All right, smart so people but, get but out you, of if there you had to estimate, things. Sheriff, you do not think there are policemen in that vehicle. Yeah. They long left that. And the parents need to get their children home. Call them home. They Dr. King, again, there. get down there quick. I'll Advise do what I the can. mayor. Well, we'll get there. Thank you know, you. Just to bring